Hello everyone. I'm here to show you how to make simple inchies. Inchies that are just squares um, cut from various things. Most of these are going to be from magazine um, images, but you don't need just magazines. You can punch squares from text, newspapers, scrapbook paper, color books. Here's a envelope pattern, um, stamped images, um, painted papers. You just grab a bunch of different things and start cutting squares from them. Um, the easiest way to do that, of course, is if you have a square punch. This one is an exact one inch square punch. If you're new to inches, you probably don't want to go out and buy equipment um, until you know that you are going to enjoy making inches. So if you have any square punches at all, doesn't matter what size, you might want to try making some squares with what whatever size that you have and see if you like it, see if it's fun for you. So a paper punch is the easiest way to do it. But if you don't have a punch, you can use, you know, a template. This one is a child's shape and there's, there's a couple of squares here. So what you would do is find your picture and use a pencil and draw around what you want and then cut it out by hand. And that can be a little time consuming. This one is a quilter's template. And so it's got um, squares here to, to make this, uh, the squares. Um, and then this one is one that I really like because it has so many different sizes. Um, but you get these at any of the office supply stores. So you can choose what size that you want. And you might even have one of these at home. So, you know, you just go to your magazine um, image and, you know, decide I want one of those and, and cut that out. I, I like these because you can see what the inchy is going to look like. So if you don't have a punch, do go ahead and just get a square of any type. And it's easier to get one that's plastic um, because if you make a cardboard pattern, the cardboard, it doesn't take long for the cardboard to start um, disintegrating and it doesn't make the same size after about 10. So you want to use something that's plastic that you can see, that you can draw around pretty easily. So if you're using a punch, find some images, you know, get a magazine that you don't really care too much about and find some small images and start punching. I like these, the punch, because I can see, let me get that in there. I can see what I want. Let's say I want like red, or do I want some of both? Do I want just daisies? I can choose exactly where I want to punch and then I've got a little inchy so I do like that um, something kind of like this I can choose exactly where I want to cut it of course I want the eye but do I want the mouth? 
do I want? So I really enjoy the punch because I can choose exactly what I want. Here's a face. And I do like making faces. But this one might be kind of cool as just um, a nose and a mouth. I like the paper punches because I can scoot them around and and see all the different possibilities. Here's one where I've outlined the square. I'm going to have to cut that by hand. So there's bunches and bunches in here of little little bits that would make cool little inchies. I do have to keep in mind that they're only going to be an inch square. So things like this, they're kind of hard to identify. And, you know, they... Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So um, you might give it a try and then see what happens. Oh, that, I need to take some of that off. doesn't go into the punch far enough. So I can kind of gauge and see if you can tell what it is it's kind of hard to tell so i might not use that one that one's kind of cool um of course this is from stampington um if you have a magazine from stampington that you don't really want anymore perfect place to get interesting images so i go through my images cut out squares and I start collecting a bunch of squares and I put them in a box so I can see them put that one in there too um, and I do collect quite a few before I start and I make sure that I've got quite a few different types some really plain ones Here's a little yellow polka dot. And some more complicated ones. This one came from a calendar. And it might not work because it's so light. Um, but what I do is I get, I like them on black. They seem to pop more when they're on black. So I get them out and I start choosing those that I would like to use. I like eyes. I like large text. I like small text. I like faces. I like patterns. Here's a leaf. I like color. Here's some newspaper. Some little subjects here. Let's put that one out there just to see if it works. Here's a face. Another face. Let's just get a few out. And I start arranging them. So I'm going to put the eye on the top and it's not an exact science when I'm messing around with them. I just kind of want to put them out, see what I have, put more complicated ones next to really simple ones. So that they stand out just a little bit. 
there's a face like light and dark I like to make almost like a checkerboard with them so that the light ones will be will bring out the darker ones and I just mess around and I do this for hours hours and hours and hours I just mess around and keep putting those that I think I like in there until I come up with something that I like. Some of these do not work really well. Let me put just a few more back. Here's a don't. Some arrows. Another little face. some words so I get some out there and then I take a look and you know what I'm, I'm not real fond of that yellow polka dot one there so let me find one it's a little bit more interesting save that for a different a different gathering and I just you know just mess around with them until I find something that I really really like and like I said I can do this for hours um, changing them up making um, I don't really want that one just making some themes maybe all one color something else um, and then I get a different piece of paper and start gluing them on and that can be tricky um, to line them up perfectly you have to decide exactly how much space you want in between them and you want to get a different piece of paper you don't want to scooch these over and then glue them onto the paper that you're messing around with because they will never scooch correctly and then they'll mess up and then they won't be in the exact order that you liked them so um, you need to arrange them on one piece of paper have the other piece of paper that you're going to actually put them on I use a ruler so that my lines are straight put them up against put a little dot of glue on them just to keep them in place and then go to the next one and make sure that there's a little space in between um, it's not an exact science and it can be a little frustrating I have done a little template for me and it is squares that have just a little border on them so that if I take and cut that out I can place that um, and then arrange the squares to fit the template. See what I mean? You put one there and one there and one there and then you've got straight edges so that 
you're good. And then you go to the next one and do the same thing until you end up at the end. So um, it takes quite a long time to line them all up correctly. And they won't be exact. If you notice mine, um, they're not lined up perfectly. They are crooked. They don't, the corners don't match. Um, some have larger spaces between them than, than others. But in the overall effect, you can't tell. So don't go absolutely crazy trying to get them absolutely perfectly put together. Um, there's so much going on, you can't tell if they're off just a little bit. Uh, so you can see that one's off quite a bit. So don't lose sleep over trying to get them exactly aligned. Almost perfect is good enough. And you can tell, even this one. You can see that this one has spaces there. Um, some of the corners overlap. It's not perfect, but when you look at it overall, you don't really notice it. Don't lose sleep over it. So that is the most simple way to mess around with inches is to just cut squares from various things. Um, here's some scrapbook paper, some text, different languages. Here are, let me put these away. And I will show you what some of the other ones look like. This one, some painted papers. I guess it's a collage that I did and cut into inches. But they are so much fun to just mess around with. have fun with. They don't have to be perfect. Um, getting the painted papers out is kind of cool. But you can see how that abstract would be pretty interesting. I have um, some collections of just faces that I put together. Um, Let's see here. These are just some faces and face parts like the other one. These are just different types of faces. And they're just fun to see how they look all together. different kinds of faces put together to get an idea of, of them. So that's my suggestion to start collecting the faces or the, the squares, different things. Make sure that they're fairly simple. Make sure that you can see what they are. If you get some, you know, that are really hard to see. They might not have enough contrast to them. They might be, the subject might be too small. You know, not all of them are going to work. Here's some painted papers. Let's 
that would be fun putting them together. Um, yes, that is the simple way to make inchies. Just gather some squares and start messing around with them, putting them together in different ways and having some fun. This is very stress-free. Um, like I said, I will get to, um, I will get some put, put together and then start putting some squares out there. And I do lose track of time a lot of times just because I am messing around with different combinations of squares and what I can put together. And um, they are kind of fun just to see what happens when you put different things together. Anyway, and, and I think that's why I like the little ones. Even just 16 squares together doesn't take very much time, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. These are five by six by five. So there's 30 squares in each one of these. But I like to see how the squares play against each other and, you know, what they do and lights and darks and putting different things together. It's just a whole lot of fun. You can spend a whole lot of time doing this. So that's it. Um, that's the simple way. I will come back again and tell you how you can use your own photographs and artwork to create inchies that are uniquely your own. Thanks for watching.